Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I'm excited to be back with five more spring and Easter budget but high-end looking home decor DIYs. So let's get started. For today's first project, we're going to be using one of these metal trays from Dollar Tree, some florals, one of these wooden bunnies from Dollar Tree, and some colored styrofoam Easter eggs. So the first thing I'm going to do with my tray is I'm going to give it two coats of my white Waverly chalk paint. I gave two coats because after one, I could still see some of the silver through. If that's a look that you like, then you can probably just give it one coat but i went ahead and did two coats after the first coat dried and then once both of my coats of paint were dry i did go over it with a layer of matte finish mod podge just so my paint would not scratch off of my tray i did not choose to paint the back side of my tray but you definitely could if you want to do that now i've used these bunnies before you get two of them in a package with some little markers and I'm just gonna use one for this. I did do a layer of white chalk paint over the bunny first, just so um, depending on which way you want the bunny to face, you don't see the black lines or the writing when we Mod Podge the paper on. Now, if you don't want to Mod Podge scrapbook paper on the bunny, you could just paint it whatever color that you would like. But I'm gonna use this really pretty pink and white um, scrapbook paper from a paper pack I've been using in a few uh, videos. And then once my paper smoothed out, it is a thicker paper, so that's why I didn't spray water on it, but I am gonna go over the top again with a layer of matte finish Mod Podge and let that dry completely. Then taking our Fiskars fingertip knife, we're gonna cut around the edges and just get as much of that excess scrapbook paper off out of the little crevices and spaces and then once we have all of the paper removed we will take our little um, finger sander or small sander and just go over the edges to get any extra paper there off of the edges so we have a nice smooth finish now I decided to take this um, brown Sharpie paint marker. You could do this with distressing ink. You could do this with a little bit of brown paint, but I just wanted to kind of give more of a, kind of an antiqued or distressed look to the edges of our bunny. So I'm just going around with the brown paint marker and then I'm gonna come back in again with my little sander and sand the edges just to make it look worn and not colored on with a marker. Once we have our edges distressed as much as we would like, then we're gonna take our hot glue gun and I'm gonna glue this to the top portion of my tray standing vertically. This bunny fits perfectly in this top part of the tray and just center that down where you'd like it. Then at this point, I'm just going to take some florals. I have some lambs ear here, I believe from Walmart, and just layering that by uh, trimming the stems and putting some hot glue down there on the tray and adding florals as you'd like. Then I'm also going to add in some of the styrofoam colored eggs and then also some little branches that have some berries on them. But you can do this for whatever color scheme. If you want more of the bright colors, you could do that. I just really liked the muted pastels and enjoyed putting this together.
And here's our finished decor. You can set this on a plate stand. If you wanted to, you could dress up the top a little bit with maybe a bow, but I really liked the simplicity of this silhouette with the florals. If you're stopping by my channel for the first time today, welcome. I sure hope you like what you see and you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. If you are a returning viewer or subscriber, welcome back. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. For my second project today, I thought I'd give you another alternative for kind of a tiered tray or shelf. In a spring theme, I'm going to use three of these wood crates from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to use eight of the five gallon paint stir sticks. I get mine at Lowe's. Now, just ignore that those crates are blue and gray. I had started using them for a different project, but for this project, I'm going to paint everything white. So I did have to use two coats of the white to cover over the blue and the gray, but normally I would probably only need to do one coat of white. Now I'm gonna paint every surface on these crates except for one of the long sides. You can see where my thumb is there because we're going to be gluing these to the paint sticks. So once the outside of my three crates were painted, I moved next to my five gallon paint sticks. Like I said, these come three in a pack for I think 98 cents at Lowe's. So I buy lots of packs at a time, and we're going to use eight sticks of the nine. Coming back to my crates, I am going to paint the entire inside of these as well. And like I said, we did two coats on the outside, but I'm only gonna do one coat on the inside. Now I'm gonna take my bottom crate. So I'm starting here, this is the back side of the crate. And I'm going to glue one of my paint sticks right down in the corner. So I'm trying to get it flush against the side so it's going to be straight up and down and also at the bottom. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the right hand side. So the back of our shelf is going to be four paint sticks wide. So here I'm putting in the middle two, just trying to get those spaced out. And then once I have all four paint sticks glued to my bottom crate, you'll see I'm going to flip it over and then we'll glue our middle crate on here and our top crate. I have my top crate um, where the top edge of it is right, kind of where the paint sticks um, come in and then come back out. I don't know if that makes sense. They kind of look like fence posts at the top. And then I just um, placed my middle crate evenly between my top one and my bottom one. So I'm using tight, tight bond wood glue. Works really great, but you do need to let it set for a minute in order for it to be completely sturdy. And I was putting some weight on them so that they would dry flat. Now I'm on one of the sides of my shelf and I'm gonna use two more paint sticks on each side. So we're gonna line this one up with the front of our crates and then the other stick will be just lined up at the back there, um, kind of covering where those four are at the back. So I think you can see I used four at the back and then two sticks on the right side and two on the left. You can change this out for any season or holiday. I just love that white picket fence look for spring and Easter. And because it's tall, it doesn't take a lot of space. For more information of the supplies and tools I'm using in these DIYs, please check the description box below the video title. For DIY number three, we're going to be using one of my Magnolia Design Company stencils, one of these jar signs from Dollar Tree, some florals, and this blank sign from Target's Dollar Spot. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the twine and as much of the paper as I can from the sign. I'm also going to take the metal um, jar topper there off, just heating it up a little with my heat gun so I can pop it off. And we're actually going to peel this paper off, but this is going to be the back side of our sign. And then I'm just sanding a little bit where the price sticker was on the back. So we're gonna use the back side. We're gonna give our jar a coat of our ink Waverly chalk paint. Um, and we're also going to paint all the side edges because they're green. You could leave them green if you wanted, but I just decided to paint everything black 
just to get a base coat for our project. Now once our black paint is dry, I'm gonna take this really cute stencil, Love Blooms here, and we're going to place this. It's a little bit smaller than the um, actual shape of the jar sign, but I didn't mind that. I'm going to line up the top of my stencil with where the top of the jar, like where the lid would be. So I will just have a little bit of extra black at the bottom, but that doesn't bother me. We're gonna get this centered on here and then we're going to use some of our white chalk paste. So everywhere that you see black right now is going to be white. I am not gonna worry about stenciling the top where the jar lid is there because we're going to re-glue the metal jar topper that came on the sign. So just smoothing the chalk paste into the silk screen mesh stencil with our squeegee and then we'll just scrape away any excess, making sure we get in all the spaces um, so that our stencil will be a nice stenciled image when we peel the stencil off and reveal it underneath. I just love that. And then we're gonna hot glue, like I said, the metal top of our jar back on to the sign. Once my chalk paste had dried for a little while, I just went ahead and did a layer of matte finish Mod Podge over the top so that this would stay permanent and our stenciled image would not come off. Then taking some jute twine, I have some of these white and gray beads. They were from a bead garland from Walmart at Christmas time. I'm going to make a bead hanger for our sign, even though there's the sawtooth hanger on it. Sometimes it's nice to have the option and to add just a little bit more of a farmhouse look. I think I did about 12 or 13 beads and then tied knots at either end of my jute twine so that we can hot glue the hanger to the back of our sign. So then just using a line of hot glue, we'll get our string on there and hot glue it again over the top. Make sure it is securely on there and evenly spaced and then we have a nice wood bead hanger for our sign. Now this sign, like I said, was $3 at Target, Bullseye's Playground, whatever it's called. And I'm gonna add some jute twine back to our jar sign. Um, if you wanted to, you could paint the sign whatever color, but I decided to just leave it the natural wood color. We're also going to make a simple jute bow for the front of our jar. Wrap it around your fingers a few times and then cut another small piece that you can tie in the middle. This is just a really simple way to make a jute twine bow to add a little farmhouse look. And I liked that the jute twine basically matched the color of our background sign. Don't worry though, we are going to be adding color to this project. It is not going to remain neutral color. Just trim the jute twine and then with a dot of hot glue, add that to the front of your jar. Super cute. Then we're gonna put hot glue all over the back of our jar sign and I'm gonna glue this at the bottom of the sign, kind of inside that little framed edge and here I'm just counting the inches of how wide it is, trying to get it centered as close as possible onto our sign. Then comes the fun part where you can take whatever florals you want in whatever colors you want. And I'm just using my little um, tin snips, I think these are called, they're really great for cutting wire. And we're just cutting the stems so that we can kind of stick the stem behind the jar. I didn't have to add a whole lot of glue because it kind of wedged them in there. And that's cool too, because then I can change them out if I ever wanna change the color of the florals. Now I wasn't happy with how these white ones looked. There was just too much space there um, between the top of the jar and where the florals were. So I took them out and instead of having those big chunks in there, I took individual um, pieces off and trimmed 
them down a little bit more so that when I stuck them behind the jar, they kind of filled in that space. I think it makes sense, but just play with it. I mean, there's really no right or wrong way, but I just love how this turned out. I am in love with these blue. They're called wildflowers, I think, from Dollar Tree, and I just think they're so cute. And then just adding a little bit of that greenery that has the teeny tiny um, white flowers. But definitely use whatever florals you have at your store or in your stash. And I love how this finished sign turned out. And I hope you do too and can use this idea and make it your own for your decor. For DIY number four, we're gonna make a fun Easter egg porch sign using this wood blank sign from Hobby Lobby and three packages of these wood Easter eggs from Dollar Tree along with the metal word happy from Dollar Tree as well. Now these are really large um, eggs. They are wood and they're about seven inches tall there. They come two in a pack just like the coloring um, bunnies that we used in the first project today. So for my chalk paint colors, I am going to paint two of these with agave. This is the closest Waverly chalk paint color to that Lagoon uh, Martha Stewart paint that I was using for a long time. It finally um, ran out, and so I was really excited that Waverly had a similar color. Then I'm gonna paint two of the eggs with my yellow, that's called Maze, and two with Ballet Slipper. Now this is the sign. We're actually gonna use the back side. This is an unfinished wood sign, like I said, from Hobby Lobby. I'm just going to paint around the frame edge of it with Pool, another Waverly chalk paint color. And next week, come back, I'm gonna do more of a religious Easter look on the other side of this sign. This metal happy is from Dollar Tree as well, and I'm gonna use that same teal, the agave chalk paint. I did have to paint over this twice um, because of the metal, and then I sprayed it with a matte clear spray. I also did spray the eggs with a matte clear spray just because this is gonna be outside, and I wanted to make sure they were protected. So here's my eggs, and I'm using these stencils from Walmart. Um, you can see I'm actually, it's actually easier for me to use the um, what's left after you punch the letter out. I just think it's easier to get the letters centered, and I'm just tracing these with a pencil. I'm gonna go, um, I think pink, yellow, pink, yellow, teal, pink, yellow, teal, and I'm just doing the words or the letters to spell Easter. Once I have all my letters traced with pencil, I'm going to take this Elmer's paint marker that I also get at Walmart. This is a fine tip, and I'm just tracing over my pencil markings. I'm gonna do this for all of my six letters. And then once my outline is dry, I will go back and we will color in the letter with the black paint marker. I really like these. These are one of my favorite craft supplies to buy at Walmart. Um, they last a really long time, and honestly, they're the best paint markers that I've tried from like Hobby Lobby, Michaels, and Walmart. I think they're a great deal. So here I'm showing you kind of how I'm gonna lay everything out on the sign. You can see my eggs are kind of overlapping each other, but I want everything to stay within the border because I am going to make this a two-sided sign. I don't want anything sticking out. So the first thing, I'm going to hot glue my happy at the very top of my sign, and then we will start gluing on our eggs, just kind of pulling them out, putting glue wherever need be, and laying them so that they overlap each other.
And here's our finished porch sign. I love the colors. They're kind of muted and pastel. Now, just because I used a board from Hobby Lobby doesn't mean you have to. You can use any piece of wood, maybe from Lowe's or Home Depot as well. If you love budget home decor DIY videos, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. It really does help me to grow my channel and continue bringing you new DIY videos each and every week. DIY number five is so cute and simple. I wanted to bring this to you, these clothespin carrots. You will need three wood clothespins from Dollar Tree for each carrot that you want to make and then some sort of greenery for the top. So the first step, I'm gonna make three carrots, so I have nine clothespins here, is to take the metal spring out of the center and then I tried to keep the pieces together that were in the clothespin together just so they would line up nicely. I'm going to paint all my pieces with my Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. I'm going to paint every surface except for the flat sides that are going to be glued to each other anyway. So go ahead and do this for all, what would that be, 18 pieces of your clothespins and then using hot glue or wood glue, I guess you could use, glue your two half pieces together um, kind of like you're making, it looks like kind of a person with a head. But we're gonna do this for all of our nine clothespins now, painted orange and glued together. Now for two clothespins, you're gonna glue just that bottom angled part together, and then take a third clothespin and glue it right in the center on top of them. So it's kind of a layered look with your carrots and your clothespins, and this is what it should look like. So then we'll do that to our other two clothespins as well, gluing those together, and then a third one on top in the center to build your carrot. Then I just had some greenery. I took a few pieces and flipping over the carrot to the back, you can see there's a little space there. Fill it with hot glue, shove your greenery in there, and then you can even put a little extra hot glue over top to kind of fill in that space and then just set it aside until it is all dried and secure. So I did that for all three of my carrots. And then once those were dry, you can add a little bow. Here I'm gonna show you three different ways. I have this black and white checked or gingham ribbon from Michaels. Tie a little bow and we'll glue that to the top of our carrot. So like I said, this uh, ribbon is from Michaels, and then this orange one is from Hobby Lobby, probably at fall time, but you could get orange and white. This one's kind of orange and beige, I guess. And then for the third carrot, I'm just gonna do another one of those simple jute twine bows where you wrap it around your fingers a few times and then tie it in the center. So you can make all your carrots different with the type of ribbon, or you can make them all the same. I'm just showing you three different options here. So then just using a little dot of hot glue, add whatever bow you've made for the top of your carrot, and that will be the finishing touch. I loved how these turned out. They're super simple and easy to make. These would look great added to a tiered tray for spring, or even that white picket fence tiered shelf that we made earlier on in this video. I have a little bonus project for you. I needed something to organize all my chalk paste. So I took 12 of these small wooden crates. You can get them at Michael's or at Dollar Tree. However, I think they're less expensive at Michael's. And just using some wood glue for the space I had, I needed it to be tall and skinny. So first I'm taking three wood crates and wood gluing them together on the long side holding them together with some of my clamps from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna make four sets of three, and then I'm gonna glue my sets to each other, clamping them 
going up. This will be my bottom row of three, and then I'll have three more rows on top. So just really simple, I didn't even paint it. I just needed something to hold all my Magnolia chalk pastes and inks. You can see those here are on the top. You can fit two in each crate. And then the smaller ones there are from a maker studio. They are only two ounces, so you can actually fit three of them. And I'm loving how organized all my chalk paint and my chalk paste is now. Thanks again so much for joining me today. Please let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite, and we'll see you next time. Take care.